guys, what's up? It's Naomi the Crafty Savage here, and I'm back for this week's Whipping Chat. If you're new to diamond painting, WHIP stands for work in progress, not that you're gonna somebody. No, no, no. We diamond painting people, we're diamond painting. Okay, chat. Chat is I'm just gonna run my mouth, tell you all about the craziness that has happened over this last week. I will be using my Chroma Diamond art pen. You can't really see it. The lighting just like freaking sucks today. I don't, I don't know. I played with it long enough and gave up, but I have my Chroma Diamond art pen. I have glue dots in my single placer and Randa's putty in my multi placer. I will be using my Muni Made tray. I am working on, I don't know what he's called. Um, I call him the Sexy Mermaid. I got it from Crystal Canvas Arts. I'm doing it for the event that Crafting with Shay and You Can Call Me Butter are hosting for uh, Mermaids and Magic 2022. Y'all, he's sexy and gorgeous uh, i did an unboxing of him some time ago that you can go scroll through and try to find but mm, he's delicious delicious i have my you can't say happiness without saying <clears throat> cover minder from oh snap crafters cafe as well as my suspicious and introverted but willing to discuss serial killers from oh my gosh what is that place called um um blow your minders I think that's what it's called. If that's not what it's called, I will make sure to have everything linked down in the description box down below. Okay, we got that out of the way. Oh, I should have plugged in my light pad. There I go, not being prepared. You know, it is what it is. We ain't gonna tell nobody, right? Right, all right. So, before we get started, how are you? guys doing today i hope you are doing wonderful um i'm i'm living i'm living um yeah i do also if you're interested i am an affiliate with treasure studios art where if you use the code naomi 15 on any purchase over 40 dollars you will save yourself a little bit of money save yourself 15% off I do make a very small commission on that you know you don't don't feel you need to use it you know just putting that out there as well as I also have buy me a coffee that I have buy me a boba because your girl loves her boba tea Alrighty, so with that being said let's get into last week so last week you know it, it started out it started out good and then as the week went on oh i want to say no it's more like once it hit the weekend oh dear lord baby jesus like it just it it went to hell in a handbasket is what it did. I can't really get into it, but there's, I just have a lot of family stuff going on, but yeah. So what was it? Um, so last week, um, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen the picture that I posted 
of somebody like they just threw like their whole damn trash can away like just the whole thing the trash bag was in it and all they didn't even bother to you know tie the trash bag nope nope they just chucked the whole trash can into the big dumpster it was um quite quite interesting i've never seen that i was like damn like what did that trash can do to you um yeah and then let's see what else happened um oh so thursday last week you know i get an email from my electric company you know saying like okay you know this is what your bill is gonna be you know blah 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 and I saw the bill and I was like, hot damn, like what the hell did I do? Leave every light on in the house? Like there is, there is no flipping way. So when I first moved in here, I mean, obviously when you get, you know, like any bill, when you first move, it's always, you know, a, a little higher because you got to pay the stupid, you know, turn on fees, this, that, you know, pay for their grandmother's, you know, cat to go to the vet. You know, who knows? It's just, it's always a lot. So I always expect that the first month. No problem. Second month I get my bill, it's like 40 bucks. Shit. You know, I, I can deal with that. So, you know, and basically it's been like around $40, $50 every month. Up until I got January's bill. So I get January's bill and the bill's like $80. And I'm like, and I remember thinking like, damn, that's, that's a lot. But I was like, you know, you, you've done more laundry, you know, da, 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 da. So I'm like, okay, you know, then, yeah, so that, I got that bill in January. So then I get this month's bill. Tell me why it's $140. Like, I was like, uh-uh. No, 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 no. Like, we, we need to look into this. I'm like, because that's just like... I'm like, it seems like, you know, it just keeps, like, doubling every month. I'm like, they lost their ever-loving mind. So, I log in to FPL, you know, to see what the hell's going on. And I see this fuel charge. And I'm like, and it was like $40. And I'm like, mmm... I don't, I don't have gas here where I live. So I'm like, let, let me call them up and tell them like, hey, hey, ding dongs, like you, you made a mistake. I don't, I don't have any gas or anything like that, that you should be charging me that. So, you know, after like, oh my gosh, it was like, they basically make it damn near impossible to get like a customer service person on the phone. And I'm like, and it's an automated thing. And I'm like yelling and I'm like, like customer service, speak to a person. And the automated things like something like, you know, like we don't see that. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like I just want to talk to a human being. So then I'm like, you know, okay. So I'm like, you want me to, you want me to hit a number? So I just hit zero, 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 until it said connect connecting you to a customer service rep. I'm like, you, you, you're damn fucking right. So, you know, this lady answers the phone and whenever I have to like call about something, like I always, I always tell the person that's on the other end. I'm like, look, I just want to say, you know what I mean? Like if I, if I start getting upset or anything, like, I mean, and I try not to, because I know that the person answering the phone, you know what I mean? Like they're just answering the phone. You know, it's not, let me not get upset with them. So, and usually, you know, by the time I get off the phone with like customer representative people, like I have them rolling. So she was really nice. And, you know, like she basically explained to me and told me like where I can log into this website and see like on a daily basis what the amount of money that is, you know, it cost me for that day. Well, there was like one day where it was like 12 freaking dollars for the day. And I know what happened. It was like, there was a couple days where it got cold 
in Florida. Like at night, it dropped down into like the low 40s. And, you know, some people, you know, if you live where it's freaking cold outside and you walk outside and you see your breath, like, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I used to live in a state like that and I moved as soon as I could, as fast as I could, because this girl is not built for cold weather. Like I'm not, there is no freaking way. Like it gets cold and I'm like, like a somebody could be chasing me with a knife and I hit a cold spot. Guess what? I'm done for. I'm just curling up in the fetal position and yep, I'm not, I'm not moving. Like I'm done. Just, just take me out of my misery. I can't stand the cold. So I turned my heat on. Well here, like, and I'm used to when I lived in Pennsylvania, um, the heat wasn't expensive. Like it wasn't expensive when your electric bill rise. It was in the summertime when you had your AC going. Mm, nope. It's the opposite here in Florida. So your bill rises when you have your freaking heat on, right? So I'm like, okay, well, it looks like I'm wearing, you know, sweatpants, three layers of socks, maybe, you know, like a pair of tights underneath them, sweatpants and a tank top and a shirt and, you know, six hoodies over top of that underneath my covers when I go to bed, if this ever happens again. So... So she explained that to me, and then I was also like, you know, I'm like, and there's this fuel charge on there. I'm like, I don't, I don't have any fuel. I don't have anything gas, so why are you charging me for that? And it was like $40. And she's like, oh, no, no, no. She's like, she's like that's, you know, like the fuel charge for the trucks. And I'm like, what? So I look at previous bills. And here, the reason why my bill doubled, if you remember me saying it went from like 40 to 80 to like 140, is because they're charging each customer like $44 or it's like 42 something. I, I don't know, but it's, it's in the, it's like a $40 freaking price for their gas to come out here and read the freaking meter. I'm like, that is just like asinine. I'm like, so you mean to tell me like every single customer is getting this $40 charge? It went from like 10 something, like almost like $11 to, I think it's like $42 now. So it's basically like it doubled my freaking electric bill. I'm like, that is like freaking highway robbery. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, you guys are making a freaking killing off of the customers. I'm like, so basically, like, and the only electric company in this area is FPL. So, like, in my building, well, it's not a building. They're, they're condo townhouses, but they're, like, four together. So, they're charging me $40 for my, you know, fuel service for them to come out. Charging my neighbor $40, charging the other neighbor $40, charging the other neighbor $40. Plus there's like, so I'm like every single person, I'm like, you're charging $40. I'm like, hey, I, I get gas went up. I mean, I'm not saying, you know what I mean? Everything has gone up. You know what I mean? So I get it. You know, okay. You, you need to raise your prices a little bit. Okay. But that, that is just freaking ridiculous. And the customer service lady, you know what I mean? Like she, she agreed with me. She was like, she was like, no, she was like, I get it. She's like, I, you know what I mean? She's like, I work for them and I had the same, she was like, and when I got that electric bill and, and like, and I couldn't, and I wasn't mad at her, you know what I mean? Like she doesn't make the rates and here, like the rates also went up by a couple, couple cents or whatever, you know? And like, and that was fine. Like it, the rate went up like five cents or something but to up your fuel charge from ten dollars to like 40 something dollars that's a 30 dollar difference i'm like that's freaking crazy i'm like there's people that are on fixed income i'm like they i guarantee you they're not going to be able to afford their electric bill so yeah that was that was quite interesting 
then I went and I filed my taxes. Let me tell you, that was nothing to, you know, I was like, woohoo, I'm going to get some money back. Nope. 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 The government took, I think it was like close to like five grand out of like taxes for the year out of my check, right? Well, because of the stimulus, well, guess what? You got to pay that back. That was not free money. Guess what? I worked throughout the whole damn pandemic. Like, I didn't ask you to send me a freaking stimulus. So, yeah, I'm like, uh, I'm getting money back. But it, it, it's nothing to, like, get all excited about and be like, woohoo. I'm like, hmm, yeah. That, that won't even buy groceries, but okay. So, there was that. Um, oh. Then also, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen where... And it was like, it. I was messing with them. But there towards the end, it was like really getting out of control. And I think it's because I pissed them off. Because I just kept like messing with them because I'm like, well, hey, if, if I'm on the phone with you wasting your time, you can't be calling somebody else. You know what I mean? Like, but it was like, I got basically it started like a little, maybe like around almost four o'clock, not quite four o'clock. And about every 15 minutes, every 15 to 20 minutes, that, like, if I didn't answer the phone, because there towards the end, like, I was just getting, I was getting sick of it. Um, they were calling saying, you know, like, it was basically something to the extent of, like, someone's trying to purchase an iPhone 11 on your Amazon account for the amount of $999, you know, if you don't recognize this. And the very first time I got the phone call, like I knew, I'm like, oh, this is a scam. I'm like, let me, let, let me, let me mess with them, right? Just like when you get the, um, what was the one thing they used to do? And oh man, I pissed so many of them people off. Like they hung up on me. The one guy cussed me out saying, <sighs> Uh, you know what I mean? Like something with your credit card and the interest rate and hit this number. So I would hit that number and I'd be like, you know, well, what, what credit card are you talking about? And the guy's like, well, what credit cards do you have? And I'm like, well, I, I don't, I don't know. I'm like, you called me. I'm like, so you tell me which credit card it is. Now keep in mind, I don't have credit cards. I only have my bank card. So I know, I know right from the get go. I'm like, yeah, okay. Let me mess with you, you know, and yeah, those, those people, I think they learn, you know, let, let's, let's stop calling her because she just fucks with us and wastes our time where we can't try to scam other people. So, I mean, like I said, like I, I have fun with these people that try to like scam and call you. I've gotten like the IRS call, da, 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 like, and I just, I mess with these people because I'm just like, mm -mm. I'm like, y you want to call and waste my time? Like, oh no, honey, I'm going to, I'm going to waste your time. Like, and I'll play dumb. I'll pretend like I'm an old lady and I can't hear them and just all, all kinds of stuff. But like I said, it was really starting to get annoying because it was literally like from I think it started at like 352 and went up until almost nine o'clock at night like every 15 to 20 minutes like if I didn't answer the phone and mess with them and it was like I was getting um calls there was like a call from Pennsylvania well and, and here's the thing if I don't recognize the number like I won't answer it because I'm like, mm, whoever you are, you know, you're probably calling about a car's extended warranty, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, if you're really getting a hold of me for something legit, you'll leave me a message, you know what I mean? And, and I'll call you right back. You know, and people get that. There's so much, you know, stupid scamming stuff going on. People understand that. So, 
But yeah, I was getting calls from Pennsylvania, from Australia, from Spain, from Italy, Poland, Sweden. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, so I was just, oh, I was so, so over it. And then they also, they started doing it again on Friday. And I just, at that point, like, my boss was like, you know, he's like, he's like just block all those numbers. He's like, eventually they're going to stop calling you. So I must have blocked probably about 20 different phone numbers. And knock on wood, I haven't heard from them basically since Saturday. But why is this not get on there? And then also, I've had, uh, if you're new to the channel, like I had to get some teeth pulled almost a month ago. And I had this like one, I don't know if it was like a bone spur. Or if it was like a piece of the tooth that chipped off, you know what I mean? Because that, that happens. They don't always get, you know, like all of the tooth when they pull it. So, dear Lord, baby, Jesus, these glue dots are just like, whew, I need to, like, rub it or something. Get it a little bit dirty so it'll actually stick here. All right. Hopefully that helps. It'll let it go. Um, but, yeah, finally, like, in this, this piece of tooth has been, like, in my gum bugging the holy living bejesus out of me probably for like the last like three weeks and it finally like i got it out and i was like oh thank you dear lord baby jesus because it sucked like it really sucked like it didn't i'm not gonna say that it wasn't painful but it wasn't like a debilitating like i guess it was more like it hurt, but it was more of like an irritating hurt. So when I got it out, like when it finally, like, I don't know, I just kept like playing with it with my tongue, trying to like force it out. And it finally came out and, oh, I was so, I was literally like, I could have thrown myself a party at that point because, oh, my life has been a lot easier since then. And then, let's see. So usually, if you guys know, on Thursdays, I'm, well, one of the guys, I don't meet up with them, but one of the guys, they stop by my house and they pick up like their pay stubs with the receipt from the bank, you know, and then they pick up the subs checks to give to my boss on Friday. Well... The guy that I usually meet with, um, unfortunately, his son passed away. So he had to go up to Pennsylvania. So I had to deal with this other guy. And this dude literally lives like, I mean, both of them. The guy I normally deal with, he's like five minutes away. The other guy is like five minutes away, just heading like in a different direction. So he texts me and he's like, yeah, he's like, Dan, Dan wants me to pick up the checks, blah, 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 blah. I'll, I'll swing by tomorrow morning. Okay, sweetheart, you can swing by tomorrow morning. But here's the thing. I don't get up until like, I don't know, like 7.15, 7.30. You leave to go to work at 6.30. If you think... I'm getting up early to meet you at my door to give you these checks. Like, no, no, no. Because you should have been here yesterday to pick them up. And because I don't start work until 8 o'clock. So, like, they, they all start, you know, like around 6.30 in the morning you know, now they start earlier than me and usually they leave work earlier than me because I work from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And now my boss, he has worked for my, I've known him, 
Oh my gosh. Ooh, a long, a long time, like a long time. I'm 40, I'll be 41 this year. And he has been around. Oh my gosh. Like I was, I was in elementary school. Okay. Like I was, I was a little grasshopper. All right. So he knows, like he knows I am not a morning person. Like I'm, I'm not. And don't, if I don't have to be up for something, don't wake me up. Like you wake me up. That's on you. That's your funeral because I am not nice like you, you can ask my kids like they don't even want to wake me up in the morning for Christmas like because I'm just I'm not I'm just I'm not a morning person there's just no if ands or buts about it like I am just not a morning person and it's funny because my one best friend she is a morning person and she's like chipper and cheerful and, and she knows like I'm not. So like when I lived in Pennsylvania and we would do like 5Ks together, I would always sleep at her house the night before because one, I'm not, I'm not hearing my alarm. Like even if I wanted to get up early and it was something I wanted to do, I will sleep through my alarm. Like I'm just... I was not made for mornings. Just it, come out and say it. So, but yeah, like there's like this meme or this video where there's like these two dogs and the one dog is like happy and chipper. And then you see like the other dog kind of like pop its head up, you know, and it looks like it's like half asleep and like dazed. Yep, that's, that, that's me. The other dog is my best friend, Allison. So, yeah. Let's see. What else happened? So, yeah. I was not getting up early. I was like, nope. Not going to happen. So, and this guy, like, he, he knows I'm not a morning person. He was married to my cousin. He knows, like, he knows I'm not a freaking morning person. So, what does he do on Friday morning? He has my son come knock on the door. Because he knew I was going to go the hell off. Like, he knew. Like, I was going to lose my crap. And that's kind of what I did. So, my son was, like, knocking on the door. And I'm like... And he's knocking like it's the damn freaking police. And I'm like, I, I know it ain't the police. Like, I didn't, I didn't do anything for them to be showing up at my house like that. And I'm like, I'm screaming. Like, I'll freaking be down in a second. So I get up and I get dressed and I swing open the door expecting to see this a-hole. And there is my sweet cherub of a son who looks like he's about ready to crap his pants because he knows I'm not a morning person. And he was he's like, I'm here to get the checks, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, let's let's rein yourself in here, Naomi. Let's let's not go off on your son because this dude is too much of a pussy to get out of his truck and come knock on your door this early in the morning because he knows he's gonna get his freaking ass handed to him. So I give my son the checks and I'm like, I'm like, you freaking tell him. I'm like, when Dan says to pick them up on Thursday, don't, don't come to my house on Friday morning because the next time I'm not answering my door and you can explain to the subs why they're not getting paid. Like, I, I don't care. Like, I don't start that early. There's no reason for me to be up that early. Like do what you're told and it was funny because when I talked to my boss because my boss usually will call me uh, like usually like 10 after 8 you know or 8 30 in the morning just to kind of like go over stuff and 
he's kind of like chuckling. He's like laughing a little bit. And he's like, so how was your morning? And I was like, well, you know, like it was good, except for, you know, this dingbat, you know, decided to come to my house, you know, first thing in the morning. And he had Jerry come to my door because he knew I'd go off on him if he came to my door. And he's like, yeah, he told me about that. And I told him, like, hey, that's your funeral. Because like I said, my boss knows. My, my boss has known me since I was in elementary school. So, you know, we're, we're talking about like a good 20, 30 years now. And yeah, yeah. Like, I just, I don't, I don't do mornings. I'm not nice. Like, I don't, I don't care who you are. I don't care. Like, don't wake me up. Now, if I ask you to wake me up early in the morning, that's, that's different. You know what I mean? Like, I'm still not like bright and chippy you know, chipper and hop out of bed, like, the birds are singing, it's such a beautiful morning, like, nah, I'm, I'm still miserable, I'm still a miserable bitch, and I'm like, don't, don't, don't talk to me, you need to give me time to compose myself, get my mind right, get my life together, before you even look at me, talk to me, like, don't, or I'm gonna cuss you out, and, yeah, so, and then on Friday, obviously, I went to work. You know, not that it's really hard. I come down my steps. I turn on my computer. I log into everything. I take Roscoe out. He does his stuff. By the time I come back in, everything is, like, signed up and ready to go because I remote him to a server in Pennsylvania. So it's not like I type the password into QuickBooks and it pops open. No, it takes a couple minutes because it's remoting into that server in Pennsylvania. So, you know, I'm going about my day at work and then I'm like, oh, I got to go to the bank because I deposit the one subs check for them um, on Fridays. And I was like, I don't want to go to the bank. And you guys probably know why I don't want to go to the bank because it's just an absolute nightmare like a nightmare like it's just like eh, just you know piss away about a half an hour to an hour's worth of your time just to go to the bank I'll be damned guys I was in and out of the bank like they they, they must have known like mm -mm, she's getting tired of our crap like we need to get our ish together yeah because I was yeah, I was like damn near shocked. I was like, holy crap. Like, what do I what do I do with this other, you know, extra 50 minutes that I'm supposed to, that I got used to, you know, take in to either sit in the drive-thru or go in the lobby. And so, yeah, I was, I was shocked. And then, um, I, I don't know how it happened. But on Friday, I, by the time Friday was over, like, whew, I had a lot of stuff I was doing this weekend. I somehow got myself roped into um, taking Mr. Q's, like, bashing him in the knee with the metal baseball bat or running over his foot. Um, while he was wearing flip-flops, like I told Ruby, I was like, just, just make sure, you, you know, he, he's aware. So he's not like, why is this crazy girl coming after me with a freaking baseball bat? <laughs> I'm like, look, I'm just, I'm just trying to help you out, Mr. Q, trying to give you a medical excuse. And then I also, um, found myself that I was going manatee hunting and I was going to catch me a manatee and send it to somebody and believe me there there are manatees um like where I live I mean not not like I just walk out my door and you know boom there's a manatee that that would be freaking awesome I love them little floaty potatoes they are adorable if you're ever down in like the Sarasota area, I would recommend 
checking out the Moat Aquarium. It is awesome there. Um, basically, what they do is most of the animals that are there, like they have sharks, they have the manatees, they have the otters, they have different fish, they have sea turtles. Um, a lot of times they get calls for like an injured animal and they rehabilitate the animal. And then, you know, as long as it's safe for the animal to, you know, be released back, that's what they do. They release the animal, you know, back into its natural environment. There are some animals that it's just not, um, it's not safe for them to be released back in. And if that's the case, you know, like they'll, they'll keep them there and take care of them. So, but at the Moat Aquarium, um, and I don't, I don't really, there's only two exhibits that I really care about. The other ones, I mean, like, eh, yeah, yeah, all right. You know, like, they, they have a shark exhibit, and, you know, at certain times, you can watch the sharks being fed. It's a little disturbing watching the sharks eat, but I don't really go there for them. I like to go to the Moat Aquarium to see Hugh and Buffett. They are the two manatees um, at the Moat Aquarium. Like, and I just, I love them. I will literally, like, because they have it, like, you know, you can see their tank with the underwater and there's, like, a ledge. You know, you can, like, I'll sit on that ledge and I'm, like, I will just watch them for hours, like, hours i love hugh and buffett they're so cute they'll come up to the glass and like smush their nose up against the glass at you like it's just it, it, it's adorable um so i hang out there for a couple hours and then they recently um a couple years ago they had an exhibit where there was a dolphin that was rescued that wasn't able to um, go, you know, go back into the wild. So they kept the dolphin and I think it was in like 2015 or 2016 or something, the dolphin had passed away. Well, since they're not like, um, they don't, it's not meant, like, it's not like a zoo. It's really, like, really, like, their main purpose is to re rehabilitate the animals and, you know, send them back out into the wild. But like I said, sometimes it's just, like, it just, it can't happen. So, when the dolphin passed away, they had the exhibit with the dolphin. Um, and, like, people, you know, were like, well, are you going to get another dolphin? And they're like, we're not gonna go out and get a dog like we're, we're not a zoo like that's not what we're doing so here there was three baby otters um that were like orphaned the one was found in florida and the other two were found i think it was in south carolina if it wasn't south carolina it was north carolina but i think it was south carolina where, I mean, like, they were, like, little babies where they couldn't fend for themselves. So, and I guess people contacted the Moat Aquarium and they brought them in and they turned the dolphin, ex dolphin exhibit into the otter exhibit. So, whenever I go to the Moat Aquarium, if I'm not hanging out with Hugh and Buffett at the manatee exhibit, you can find me over at the otter exhibit hanging out with its um, Huck, Pippa, and oh, good golly, what is that other? Jane. Huck, Pippa, and Jane are the three otters. Ask me, ask me what the other animals' names are at the moat, and I, I couldn't tell you. I could care less. I just care about the floaty potatoes and the otters. And I can watch them for hours. But yes, I somehow found myself that I was going to go find a manatee in the wild and I was going to capture it and I was sending it to somebody's house and it was going to be a trade. I wanted a diamond painting pen. 
I was giving them a manatee. And like I said, like I could literally about, oh, I don't know, it's like a 15, 20 minute drive. There is a river or like body of water called Little Manatee River. And guess what is in that river? You guessed it, manatees. So, yeah. And then as the night went on, I somehow um, found out that I was gonna be Baby Cake's pimp, you know? And I was gonna be slap anybody who didn't pay her. And <laughs> Look, I don't I don't know how I get myself into these situations. It just happens, right? It it just happens. So that was basically Friday. Saturday, I woke up and you know, I came downstairs and I was like, I'm gonna diamond paint. Well, Dirty Bird Roscoe decided he was gonna hop in my spot. So I was like, okay. You know. Let's let's cuddle a little bit because, you know, he, he acts like, you know, he's a neglected puppy who gets no love. And all I do is diamond paint and don't show him any attention. Don't 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 believe his lies. They are lies. They are lies. He is well taken care of, gets his love in. He just wants you all to think that, you know. I, I choose diamond painting over him. That is that is not the case. Shh, don't don't tell him that sometimes that is the case, okay? But he don't, he don't need to know that. So I cuddled with Roscoe for a little bit on Saturday, and then I basically diamond painted the rest of Saturday away. Um and then that is kind of when my weekend just went to hell in a handbasket. I can't really get into details about it, but let's just say like it's it's pretty bad. Um it's it's really bad. Um just some family stuff that's going on that needs to be taken care of and I think as of today it should be taken care of. Like people from Pennsylvania had to fly down here. Like oh my god. Like I just I just want this nightmare to be over like I people keep trying to drag me into it and I have no parts of what is happening um I have like nothing to do with that but people are like you know well why why didn't you call why didn't you say something um, mofo, I said something to you in December. You just decided to let it just go until basically the end of February when shit really got worse. So, yeah, my family, we just, we just need some prayers and that's kind of all. I'm going to kind of like elaborate on that because I, I don't want to be put in people's, you know, personal stuff out there. Like if it's my own stuff, you know me, I'll, I'll tell you everything. I don't care. Um, But yeah, so on Sunday, I did manage to record a video um, that should be out on Tuesday think so and with this video like I had to you know stop certain times to like show this product that I was showing and the um and I hear this like and at the one point like the one part like I stopped because I was doing something and I hear this like bzzz, like behind my 
mini blinds over here by the window. And I'm like, what the hell? So I'm like smacking it, you know, and it's <laughs> even more. And I'm like, oh, God, baby Jesus. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So I pull up the blinds and there's a bee. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 not today, right? So I'm taking this like big thing of Lysol wax and I'm like trying to jam it and shove it and it's not working. So I'm like, oh, I have my butcher knife that I usually use to like when I cut open packages for my unbag unbaggings and unboxings. So I'm trying to like stab the bee as it's like in the, like the windowsill and I'm not getting it. And like sometimes I would get it and it's like it's buzzing was like instead of like a bzzz, it was like. I'm like, what the hell? Well, here there's this like moving company that's like backing up and the guys are getting out and they can see me because I got like my blind pulled up. I'm like, these guys probably think I'm some, like, wackadoodle over here trying to smash, like, this Lysol bag wipe into the thing. And then they see me come out with this, like, butcher knife. And I'm like, nah, 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 nah. and then the bee, like, flies, like, where it was underneath, like, where I could slide it. So I'm opening the window, trying to get to this bee with this knife. Like, I'm just doing everything because, one, I'm allergic to bees. I don't, I don't, nope, nope. Now, like, if they're outside in their own little element, I will leave them be. I, look, when you come into my house, though, unless you're paying rent or unless your name is Roscoe P. Jenkins, you got to go. Like, nope, nope. So, yeah, so I'm pretty sure that the people that were moving the neighbors out um, thought I was like freaking off my rockers, like a screw a few fry short of a happy meal. They were like, yo, that girl up there, she is like the whole happy, she's like the toy short in the happy meal, like done, right? So I got that taken, um, taken care of. And then let's see, Monday. You know, went back to that dreaded work. The only reason that really keeps me motivated to get my butt up on a Monday is it is payday for me. So, yeah. And the bank was open. Woohoo! <laughs> um, so that, that's usually what motivates me to get my butt up out of bed on Mondays when I don't want to. Because I'm like, mm, girlfriend, do you want to get paid? Mm. You're the one that does the payroll. Like, if you don't get your butt up, guess what? You're not getting paid. So, I get my slap happy butt up and do the payroll and proceed about my Monday. Um, and then, on Monday, like, I ran to the bank to, like, deposit everybody's check. And when I went to get out of my car, like, my, like, it did this, like, twinging feeling and I was like oh my god like no 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 like please don't let my back go out because I have a bad back like I a bad back um a couple years ago I was literally like I I was crooked there was no like, so if this was my, like, legs and this was my upper body, I was, like, tilt this way. And it was, like, I was doing physical therapy. I was getting, like, steroid injections into my back. I was going to the chiropractor. At one point, like, I even went to a surgeon in Philadelphia to have them look at my back, like, it was really, really bad. And I still have like a curve in my spine. It'll never go away. I have scoliosis. Um, but what basically like saved me, and I'm talking like this, this was going on for, oh my gosh, probably about a good three 
years uh, until it got to the point where, um, like when I went to go see the surgeon, you know, and he was like, well, did you do this? And I'm like, yep, I did this, 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 and this. And he was like, wow. He's like, okay. He's like, cause usually the stuff that I recommend to people to do, he's like, you have already done it. He's like, so this is what we're going to do. So he sent me to have like a nerve block, um, you know, like put in my back. And when I say that was like, like an, a miracle because I was going to like the chiropractor and doing physical therapy and, you know, getting like the steroid injections, but they weren't really working. So this nerve block, like it actually made it to where when I would go to the chiropractor to get adjusted, like I wasn't in tears because it hurt so bad. And it basically, it allowed the chiropractor to be able to keep adjusting me and for the adjustment to, to finally like stay because I couldn't feel the pain because they blocked the nerve. Um, yeah. Where, I mean, even at one point, like my insurance company was like, you know, we're not going to pay for this anymore. And the chiropractor I was going to was like... Naomi, I need to take a picture of you to send to your insurance company because they don't want to keep covering this. He's like, and you really need it. And he he took the picture and he sent it to them. And guess what? They approved it because they were like, oh, hot damn. Like, I remember my uncle, he would tell me, he was like, nay. He's like, every time I see you, he's like, I just want to shake you until you're straight. Because he was like, straighten out, straighten out. And I couldn't straighten out. Like, I could not get my back to straighten out. Um, so, I basically, like, rested Monday after I got done work. Because I was like, I cannot. One, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go through that again. I don't want to go through years of being in pain like where I remember the surgeon he was like he's like well I don't want to operate on you you know let's see if this nerve block works blah 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 and I think I even told him I was like well what if I just took a scalpel and just cut into my back you would have to do it then right like because that's that's where I was at like and I mean I fought and but where I did not want to get back surgery because I worked for a chiropractor for three and a half years. And I can't tell you how many people that would come in and tell me that like they had back surgery done and they wish they never would have done it because the pain is worse now than it was before they got the surgery. And I'm like, yep, nope, nope, we're not, we're not doing surgery. Like, we're going to do X, Y, Z, A, B, C, and, you know, let's, let's throw in some M, N, L, O, P in there, you know. So, for me to, like, agree to finally see a surgeon, like, because I was just, I was so tired of being in pain. Like, I couldn't. I couldn't sleep in my bed because I couldn't get the hell back up in the morning. So I literally, like, I slept in a recliner for so many years. It was like, and I would be in so much pain, I would fall asleep. But then maybe like 45 minutes to an hour later, I was up again because of the pain. Like, and like I said, this was going on for a couple of years and I just... I couldn't take it anymore. And I have a high tolerance for like physical pain. I have a high tolerance for physical pain. I can deal with a lot. So when I'm like, I'm over it, like I'm over it. Like I was taking muscle relaxers and pain pills. And it was getting to the point where like they weren't doing anything like they weren't even like knocking me out like nothing like my body got used to it and I was like I don't I don't 
I don't want to be put on anything else. Like, I don't want to up this. Like, I was so scared of getting addicted to, like, the pain pills and stuff like that. So, because I'm the kind of person that I don't, I don't want, you know, pain pills or anything like that. I don't, I don't abuse them, nothing like that. Because guess what? When I'm in pain, uh, because when I'm in pain, I want them to work, right? I don't want to build up a tolerance. And that's what was happening. I was building up a tolerance to the pain medication because I was on it for so long. And like, if anybody's ever taken a muscle relaxer, like, you know, you take that and you're drooling on yourself. At that point, I could take it and hop in my car and drive, you know, and drive like 40 minutes away and not be tired. I wouldn't fall asleep. Like my body was just getting used to it. And that is not, not a good thing. So... I'm trying to find this little A. Because, you know, it never seems to fail. You go and put that color away. And it's like, bam, here's some more. Just joking. But, yeah. So, that was basically Monday. Um, yesterday was Tuesday. I record my whipping chats on Wednesday. And you guys see them on Thursday. You know, I worked. And I wound up talking to my mama for about two and a half hours yesterday and I think it's it, it's what I needed I just needed some like just mama advice you know what I mean just then my mom's coming down here at the end of March I'm not sure how long she's going to be staying for um, cause like I said, there's, there's a lot going on down here right now. Um, but yeah, like that, it kind of like made me like, I don't feel as stressed anymore. You know, I don't know. There's just something about mamas that you just tell them, you know, your worries and what's going on and they just, they just make it all better. So, and then today, um, I went to leave to run to the 7-Eleven. And I'm not sure if it's the maintenance guy, like, in the development. It didn't look like him. But there was a guy with, like, a leaf blower. Now, this mofo watched me get in my car, right? And that's when he decided he was going to walk behind my car and, like, you know do the stuff so I'm like okay you know like let's just give him a second you know what I mean he's just gonna blow this stuff real quick you know and then he'll be on his way no 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 he wasn't so at that point I'm like all right let me put my foot on the brake so he'll actually see the brake lights and be like oh snap let me get out of her way no that didn't work Right, So I literally like sat in my car for probably about like two minutes waiting for this guy to like blow the shit. And like, and he's like blowing my car. And I'm like, I don't care about the damn leaves on my freaking car. Like once I get driving down the road, them suckers are going to fly off. Like just get the F out of my way so I can back up. So finally he moves out of the way. So, and like I said, like, he saw me. Like, it wasn't like he didn't realize what I was doing. Like, he saw me. So, when I start to back up, and this mofo freaking walks behind my car again. So, I have to slam on my brakes, and I'm like, I hit my horn. Because at that point, I'm like, you know what? Like, I don't give a shit who you are. Like, just get the F out of my freaking way, mofo. He wasn't too happy, but I don't, I don't really care. You know what I mean? Like you saw me backing up and you decide you're going to walk behind my car. You are a grown ass man. You are not a child running after something like get the F out of my way. So yeah, that has basically been my week in a nutshell. So 
With that said, guys, I'm going to hop on out of here. If you're new to the channel and you liked what you saw, hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Because if not, you won't know when I post my videos. So, guys, I'm out of here and I'll talk to you later.